Hi everyone, welcome to this session about SNOMED CT with FIRE presented by Peter Williams uh, from SNOMED International. Uh, my name is Lillian, uh, I'm from FIRELY. Um, I will be your moderator for this session. Uh, please post any questions that you have in the Q&A box of this session and we uh, will be able to answer them at the end of the session. So over to you, uh, Peter. Thanks, Lillian. Hi, I'm Peter Groves Williams. I'm a technical specialist with SNOMED International, and this session will be an introduction to SNOMED CT with FIRE. If you've seen this presentation before, it's largely unchanged from previous years, just trimmed down a little and some of the waffle is gone. I'd like to convey three things to you today. Why SNOMED is great, how best it to use it together with FIRE, and therefore how that's going to help make your applications awesome, also safe, fit for purpose, and a bunch of other good stuff. So here's what we're going to look at today. It's going to be a game of two halves. First, we'll look at SNOMED, what it is and how it works. And then we'll move over to looking at FIRE. Jim Steele covered terminology resources already in his Follow the Yellow Brick Code talk on Wednesday, which I thoroughly recommend watching on catch up if you didn't see it live. So with having Jim covered terminology services in general, I'm going to focus on some aspects of FIRE that work in a particular way when coupled with SNOMED CT. I'll also look at our Snowstorm terminology server, which is free to use, available on GitHub. And finally, talk about how HL7 and SNOMED International got together in 2016 to form a working group, which we, of course, had to call SNOMED on FIRE. So I'll talk about the work we do there and invite you to join that if you're interested. SNOMED CT, the CT stands for clinical terms, is the most comprehensive and precise clinical terminology in the world. SNOMED CT is first and foremost an ontology as opposed to a classification, which means that it's a set of concepts and categories in a given subject area that shows the properties and relationships between those concepts. SNOMED is a polyhierarchy. You could call it a directed acyclic graph if you wanted to hold your own with a computer scientist. Each concept can have many parents. Each concept can be many types of thing at the same time. So it's not a classification system like ICD, where a code can only belong in a, one particular bucket. Classifications like ICD are really good for statistical reporting. If you can only put a code in a single bucket, then your numbers will always add up to 100%. But that doesn't represent real world complexity, like acute renal failure due to procedure, for example. Is that a disorder of the kidneys or is it possible indication of medical malpractice? Well, it's both things at the same time. And it's self-describing. Most things in SNOMED, the different types of descriptions, the attribute types, the metadata, even the structure of the reference sets themselves are all described using SNOMED codes. Now, my first draft of this presentation had eight bullet points and sub bullet points on this slide. But as Antoine de Santox-Bury said, Perfection is achieved not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. So eventually I arrived at this Zen-like simplicity. SNOMED CT has comprehensive scope. It contains concepts describing disorders, anatomy, medicines, procedures, organisms, substances. So there's the potential to record everything you need in an electronic health record with a single terminology. It's computable for analytics and decision-making. For example, pharmacovigilance, and that's especially important when you need alerts in real time. It's often said that SNOMED is the most specific, the most detailed and granular terminology, but in fact, it can be used at whatever level of detail you need. For decision support, you want to know exactly what condition a patient has, exactly what medicines they've been given and so on. But then for population reporting, you might want to do that analysis far more generally, say patients with lung conditions. So you can take that fine grained detail in the underlying data and look at it with a far more abstract lens or whatever level of detail your use case calls for. So that Zen-like simplicity didn't allow me to include post-coordination, which allows systems to create new concepts at runtime. And that's something that's particularly interesting about FIRE is that whenever you see a slot for a SNOMED code, you could in theory pass in one that you've just created as a post-coordinated expression. And the rules for creating those new concepts are also computable. We call that the machine readable concept model. SNOMED CT was formed by the amalgamation of two systems, SNOMED RT from the College of American Pathologists and the Reed coding system developed by Dr. James Reed at the NHS starting in 1986. 
But maintaining terminology is a time consuming, expensive and difficult thing to do. So the International Health Terminology Standards Development Organization was brought into being in 2007. But you can read all about this history in Wikipedia. The main points I wanted to make in this slide are firstly, that this is a truly international undertaking. And secondly, while SNOMED has existed for some, in some form since the 60s, it continues to evolve as a product. In July 2018, for a recent example, we switched from expressing relationships in flat triple format to do so using web ontology language, OWL, which lets us use additional axioms and general concept inclusions and all that description logic goodness. Right, let's take a look at the logical structure of SNOMED CT. This diagram usually comes much later in presentations, uh, presentations about SNOMED, but I thought, well, this is dev days. These guys are hardcore. Let's hit them with a class diagram. Everything in SNOMED is a type of component. They all have identifiers, get an updated effective time whenever they change, and belong in a particular module. Every component also has a Boolean flag. No published component is ever deleted, only marked as inactive. Component is an abstract class. The concrete classes are concepts, descriptions, and relationships. I don't know if you can quite see the cardinality here, but every concept must have at least two descriptions and at least one relationship saying what the parent is. The one exception to that rule is the root concept, SNOMED CT concept, which has no parents. So for the next three slides, we'll look at each of these in turn, starting with the concept. Concepts have a unique numeric identifier up to 18 digits long, and each concept is linked to a fully specified name or FSN, which doesn't change. Well, the FSN could be clarified, have an acronym expanded or some minimal tweak. But if we wanted to change it enough so the actual meaning were to change, the concept would have to instead be inactivated and a new one created. The meaning of the concept cannot change over time. And the meaning is taken first and foremost from the FSN, even more so than the attributes, which can change. Descriptions. Each description has its own identifier, also a SNOMED code or SCT ID, linked to the concept identifier and its own versioning and information independent of the concept. SNOMED's release format specifies the UTF-8 character set, so we can handle a whole bunch of diacritical remarks, umlauts, acutes, circumflexes. So we're ready to handle Hindi, Korean, and traditional Chinese medicine, which is going to be a whole lot of fun. That said, our user interfaces don't yet deal with languages that read from right to left. There are three different types of descriptions. A description can be an FSN, a synonym, those are both limited to 255 characters, or a text definition, which is limited to 4K. But a concept must have at least one FSN and a preferred term. The preferred term in any given dialect is expressed by a language reference set. We'll come to those later. FSNs must be unique in any given language across all active SNOMED concepts. The FSN includes a semantic tag in brackets, which is used to disambiguate. It tells you what major hierarchy a concept is in. I should say that synonyms do not need to be unique. For example, fundus, which is the part of an anatomical structure opposite of an opening that exists in the stomach, the eye, uterus, and gallbladder. And each speciality calls that thing simply fundus. So context is very important, and that's always explicit in the fully specified name. Relationships. Each concept is associated with other concepts by a set of relationships. The relationships express defining characteristics of a concept, and again, their components, so they have a unique identifier and versioning information. Relationships have two main flavors, although they look identical, and there's no distinction made in the release format. They can either be an isa, which means they're setting the hierarchy, or they're about some other property of the concept, in which case we'd call that an attribute. There's no limit on the number of attributes a concept can have. And if you say concept B is a child of A, then concept B will inherit all the attributes of A. I need to also mention relationship grouping. So we might have a condition which features boils appearing on your face and an inflammation of the foot. To make it clear, we group the relationship about boils with the relationship saying the finding site is face. Otherwise, it's not clear if you've got boils on your face or your foot and your doctor has no idea what condition you've got. I think what you as an audience should conclude from this example is that I have no medical training beyond basic first aid. 
So let's take a look at the hierarchical structure of appendectomy. Hopefully you can read this. There's a lot to fit into one slide. If not, I'm just hoping to convey a sense of the levels of abstraction in SNOMED from the most specific to the most general. And you can choose what level to work at depending on your use case. Starting with those two relationships at the bottom of the screen, appendectomy is a operation on appendix, and it also is a partial excision of large intestine. We can then move on to look further up the hierarchy. And we can see that operation on appendix is a type of procedure on appendix. And similarly, that a parcel excision of large intestine is a subtype of large intestine excision. And so on, building further up the hierarchy, bringing in more and more general concepts. Until we get to the concept procedure, which is the most general concept under which appendectomy and all other procedures sit in SNOMED CT. And then finally, to the concept SNOMED CT concept itself, which is the most abstract concept in SNOMED, also known as the root. So this is what appendectomy looks like in a model diagram. And there's all sorts of detail in there that you'd learn about if you took one of our foundation courses. But just to pick out a couple of things. Although appendectomy is the preferred synonym for the concept, it doesn't appear in this diagram. To be completely unambiguous, the fully specified name is excision of appendix. And you see the semantic tag in brackets there clarifying that this is a procedure. Secondly, those three bars in the top circle indicate that this concept has been marked as sufficiently defined. And the effect of that is any procedure that has these same two attributes grouped together will be inferred to be a type of appendectomy. These inferences are made by a computer program called the classifier, of which there are many on the market, Elk and Snow Rocket being the two we use at Snowman International. Reference set. Here are the three major types of reference set, although there are 21 different sorts in total, which you can read about in the SNOMED technical implementation guide in our document library. A simple reference set is the same idea as a subset or value set. Simple maps get used for all sorts of things, most importantly, language reference sets and our historic replacement mechanisms. And finally, when a simple map won't cut it, there are complex maps which we need for mapping to ICD-10, where there are extra considerations at runtime. Like for example, it might make a difference to the mapping if the patient is male or female, which generally SNOMED doesn't worry about in, in the disorder hierarchy anyway. Reference sets are also used to describe SNOMED CT structure. For example, we have a reference set to describe the shape of reference sets themselves, module dependencies and the description formats. Okay, so that's about two hours of foundation course material condensed into 10 minutes, but uh, we're not at a SNOMED conference, we're at a fire conference, so I need to get on and talk about fire. But first I do have to talk about a thing I love best in SNOMED because we're going to need it later on. Expression constraint language, which is I think the most powerful feature of SNOMED CT. When I go to trade shows, I love to annoy salespeople in booths by asking them what they like best about their product and they never know. But if they ever ask me in return about SNOMED, I'd say ECL. ECL allows us to specify a subset of SNOMED concepts based on their position in the hierarchy and the presence or absence of a set of attributes, again, potentially grouped and optionally specifying some sort of cardinality. ECL gets used all over the place in SNOMED, in our template language, our machine readable concept model, reporting, in our specification of reference sets or subsets, and we'll see shortly how it can be used directly in fire value sets. The table here shows symbols we use 95% of the time. There are other operators for ancestors, immediate parent child, a reverse operator and cardinality. Documentation on all of this can be found in SNOMED's document library. Excuse me. So here's an example of some ECL. Reading left to right, I'm saying I want all descendants of medicinal product where there's an attribute which has some sort of has ingredient. So that would either be has ingredient or has precise active ingredient. And it takes an attribute value of caffeine. Fully specified names between the pipe symbols are entirely optional in ECL if you're a computer, but those of us who haven't memorized 350,000 numbers like to have them in there in general. Moving on to show logical operators. Here I'm saying that I want all the concepts I selected on the last slide, and then I want the intersection of that with all the members of some subset. And we'll see when we start talking about fire that the member of operator, that hat symbol on the bottom line, 
allows you to reuse existing published SNOMED artifacts and expose them very quickly as fire value sets. So that's SNOMED as a logical model and language. In terms of our support for fire, we've also made a terminology server available as an open source project on GitHub. And that was written in Java with Spring and Elasticsearch. Actually, all software produced by SNOMED International is open source. Snowstorm is not a commercial product, although we do try to react as quickly as we can to issues raised on GitHub, and it only supports SNOMED CT as a terminology. Snowstorm was written primarily, primarily to serve the internal needs of SNOMED International. It provides the backend data store and business rules engine for a lot of our applications. Here you can see our authoring platform that the clinical terminologists use to maintain the ontology. And here's a shot of our public browser, which lets you dive into the international edition, as well as a number of country editions. We get a lot of people trying to obtain all of SNOMED by hitting this API, so it's rate limited. And we specifically state that the instance that we're hosting should not be used as part of anyone else's production system, although they'd be welcome to run up their own instance on their own hardware. It's worth noting there, middle top right, the addition last year of an expression constraint tab that lets you try a TCL. We're hoping to enhance that with some sort of auto-completion syntax in the near future. So right, that concludes what I wanted to say as an introduction to SNOMED CT. I'd now like to turn to FIRE and specifically in relation to using SNOMED. So here are the main FIRE terminology resources we're going to look at today. And each one has a number of operations that can be performed. Now, Jim Steele covered this uh, really well the other day. So I'll just really focus on SNOMED specifics. And um, we'll work through each of these in turn, starting with code system instances. So as with other resources, you just have a URL ending with the name of the resource to get back a list of the ones available. And you can filter that on any of the fields that come back. In this example here, I'm looking for a particular release date or publisher. Let's pull that through. And there's only one in there for that particular date. That's the international edition. The system identifiers that come back are implementation dependent, so they depend on the server that you're calling. What we decided to do with Snowstorm was just pick out the meaningful identifiers from the URI. So we state the module identifier and the effective date together with the letters SCT to give those some context. So these objects don't exist as far code system objects in the Elasticsearch data store. What happens in our implementation is we query the additions of SNOMED internally in Snowstorm and then map those to happy data structures. Right, code system, lookup operation. Here I'm saying, I've got this SNOMED code, tell me more about it. In example one, I'm specifying the URI for SNOMED CT and we'll get back a default set of properties. So there's a topical example. In the second example, I've specified the full URI for a particular version. And if we go back to those heady carefree days of last summer and the July 2019 edition, we'll see that the concept for COVID-19 will not be found. Well, oh, concept not found. In the last example here, I'm requesting an additional property. The FIRE specification has a page listing particular properties that can be requested on SNOMED concepts, the module ID, whether the concept is sufficiently defined in a logical sense. But the most interesting property is the normal form, which is how you see the detail of how a concept has been modeled, the attributes in FIRE. So let's see what that looks like when it comes back. So this is a syntax called SNOMED Compositional Grammar. I've chosen a complex example here with 500 milligrams paracetamol tablet to show off just how much there could be in here. But a SNOMED expression could be as simple as just saying what the parent is and nothing else. And the graph in that case would result in a new primitive leaf node. Now it might be in receiving some fire resource, we come across a code that we haven't seen before. And we want to say, is this even a valid SNOMED code? And we use code system validate for that. So in the first example there, we're using coding, which when expressed in a URL as part of an HTTP GET request, is done using the code system, followed by a pipe symbol, followed by the code itself. So let's click through on that. 
impalement of foreign body in back. So you might need that if you're a member of Boris Johnson's cabinet or if you're a vampire, or indeed if you're both. Now it's possible, especially if there's been some natural language processing going on, that we've ended up with a code that's slightly different from what the physician originally intended. So it's important to also validate the term that was entered or selected. And in the case of the example here, we'll get a response back saying, yes, that concept exists, but that's not the term associated with that concept. And that's an overall fail, indicating Boolean false here. So what you have there is a hangover and you can't get away with claiming it's just nausea. So if the call you made uh, supplied one of the other synonyms, you would get an overall success, but the actual preferred term would be given back to you. Subsumption. Subsumption is checking whether one concept is a type of another concept. In the hierarchy, is it underneath a descendant of some other concept? And this is where we really see the power of SNOMED's polyhierarchy, especially for analytics. So let's say I had a decision support system where I want to arrange a follow-up visit for any patient with diabetes. In a traditional database search, I'd need to know every specific type of diabetes that might have been entered into the notes. I checked and SNOMED says, says there's 117 of them. And that list will change over time. But with a terminology server, I don't need to gather that information. I can just say, is this code that I've got a type of diabetes? So in the example here, I've received a medical record for a patient with bronze diabetes, and I want to check, is that a type of diabetes? Is code A a type of code B? Stated mathematically, is A subsumed by B? In this case, it turns out the bronze diabetes is not a type of diabetes. Let's click through on that. Not subsumed. It's not even a disorder of the endocrine system. How we laugh that day, those crazy medical terminologists and their precious sense of humor. Right, value set instances. This is very straightforward. As with all resources, we just give the name of the resource and we get back a list of the ones available. Also a feature of any field search is the text modifier saying here that I want a value set where the title contains the word condition. By default, with mo no modifier, you would get a starts with text match. Let's see if we've got any of those. There are some value sets that have been defined. So these are not expanded. This is just the compose element. Uh, we'll see, we'll see a an expansion a bit later on. Support for those text mod match modifiers was recently added in Snowstorm. And something that I've struggled with with the FAR specification is there's so much of it that a developer could potentially implement. There's no obvious roadmap through which should be developed first or what's most important. And it completely depends on your use case. There's no one answer to that question. So that's why I found events like this really valuable because I could offer up a URL for people to try out and they say, oh, this thing's missing or I was expecting some other thing to come back a bit differently. And that's where I get my prioritized to-do list from and map out sprints and releases and so on. Value set expansion. Well, we've got to Friday of the conference now, so hopefully everyone is happy about expanding a value set. And that is to ask the server to evaluate whatever content or rules the compose element states against a particular instance of a code system and list all the codes that satisfy those rules. So I'd like to focus on a particular strength of SNOMED CT in internationalization and multi-language support. You can see here that I've told the server to ignore whatever code system is specified in the value set and instead expand against the Dutch module. And because I haven't specified an effective date in the URI there, we're going to get back the most recent release. And I want the preferred term to come back in Dutch. I'm also going to filter for the word pollen. So if I click through on that link and scroll down to the expansion element, so there's the definition of the value set. And there, here comes the expansion. So you'll see that not every concept in the Dutch edition has a translation. So we might choose to specify the parameter include designations here and fall back to English where the Dutch is not available. Implicit value sets. Now well, this is in my mind, the coolest feature of FHIR because it uses my favorite SNOMED feature, which is expression constraint language or ECL. Your applications do not need to predefine and maintain value sets on a FHIR terminology server. You can just specify a selection at runtime. 
And that's especially useful for creating context-specific user interfaces. You could say, I want all concepts that are some type of code or members of some existing reference set, or you could go free full ECL. And that's what I've done in this example. I'm looking for all types of procedures with any sort of procedure site, be it direct or indirect, being performed on any type of heart structure. And we'd get back 100, uh, 1,616 concepts back from that query, which is too many to scroll through. So the physician might start typing because they want to do an MRI. So we can add a filter there, which I'm showing in green, which cuts the list down to 24. And that's a much more manageable list to display to the user. There we go, 24 coming back in total. Okay, let's clean up a bit. Value set validate code. So we covered validate code as part of the code system resource. And here it behaves exactly the same, except that we're asking, does this code appear in my value set? And optionally, have I got the correct display term associated with it? Where that's more interesting is in these dynamically defined or implicit value sets, where that set of concepts, the expansion, is changing with each new release of SNOMED and also between countries. So we could get back a different answer from one day to the next. So if it's important that the contents of, contents of a value set should never change, then you will want to upload and store a value set object where the exact addition and effective time of a particular SNOMED release is set in the compose block, and then it won't change over time, unless you use the force system version parameter during the expansion. Concept map. Concept map is really intended to let you map from one code system to another. So we'll he see here an example of getting the ICD-10 code back for a concept. So for the source here, which is in red, I've got the URI for the value set of all SNOMED concepts. And I'm mapping that to a target, which is the URI for ICD-10. And then in the URL, I've specified the reference set, which contains the SNOMED to ICD-10 map. So click on that. And there's our mapping, Q7 9.8. Now, because all these maps are just reference sets, you can actually use, or perhaps misuse, the translate operation to obtain other useful information, like the reason for a concept being inactivated, and the code that SNOMED suggests you should use as a replacement. So in the second example here, both my source and target are shown in red, from SNOMED back to SNOMED, and my concept map identifier specifies the same as historical association reference set. So here we've got an inactive code, and there's its replacement. Now, the only point of this slide is to mention that the ICD-10 maps that SNOMED International publishes are unidirectional. They go from the more granular SNOMED to the more general ICD. But in this example, we're asking to go the other way around. And if we run that command, we'll see that Q79.8 as an ICD-10 code is actually linked to 62 SNOMED codes. So while that might be informative and something you could dig into further, it's not safe to use as a mapping. Perhaps you could work out the most general SNOMED code of that set, but it wouldn't be safe to use without some secondary review. Mapping back from a more generalized code system is like taking a thumbnail of a photo and trying to blow it up to A4 size. Once you've lost that fine grained detail, there's no going back to it. So that's why storing re and retaining the original SNOMED code is so important. ICD-10 can then be mapped to on demand for reporting or billing use cases. Right, so where all this SNOMED and FAR together is getting to is, how are we going to make your medical application responsive, context sensitive, and therefore promote interoperability? So we've written a demo application here that show, uh, showcases best practice. And for this, we'll use an implicit value set expansion with a text filter applied. Uh, let's bring up the developer's tools. Not using that, I'm switching between um, should I? Come on, you. Hmm. It is live. Show me developer's tools. Oh, alt. Close you. Mm. 
More tools, developer tools. Okay, let's go to the network tab. So here in my procedure, I'm gonna start for an appendectomy. Appen, appen. And you can see here the fire call being made. And we're binding that field to procedures, which keeps the choices offered to the user constrained to the specific domain they're working in, not to the whole of SNOMED. And then the type ahead filter means they're not scrolling through 58,000 concepts. Now, I don't know if you can read that. You're welcome to try it for yourself later. But you'll see the call to expand some ECL in the URL, which contains the results to the procedure hierarchy. And then the term filter there is keeping the number of results manageable. So that call doesn't even get made until the user has typed three letters. And also the drop down, top right, shows the industry standard nature of the Fire Terminology API. We can just drop into a different server at runtime and exactly the same call will be made to some other server. Okay, last slide here then. Just to give a shout out to our Snowmed on Fire working group who have a call every Tuesday which at a very reasonable time in the US afternoon, a bit close to bedtime in Europe and quite unfashionably early in the Wednesday morning in Australia. And we're there for the benefit of anyone interested in using SNOMED and FIRE together. We split the discussion into two streams, which meet week about, one stream focused on server API development, and the other looks at binding the terminology to the information model, profiles and value sets. And some great experts lead those discussions. So you can find out more about that on our Confluence site, and you're all very welcome to join those calls anytime. That concludes my presentation. Um, I believe we have time for questions now, Lillian, if there are any. Uh, yes, we have. Thank you for your presentation. Um, first question I have is, how is UMLS associated with SNOMED? UMLS, um, yeah. Generally, specifically in Snowstorm, we don't support other coding systems now. So uh, all you can store in Snowstorm would be SNOMED codes. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, if relationships of a given concept can change, uh, this changes in fact the meaning of this concept, isn't it? It can do. The primary citizen is taken to be the FSN. Modeling does change. There are different approaches to modeling. Um, we use a particular style, proximal primitive modeling, where we set the highest level primitive concept we can as the parent. Um, if the actual meaning of the concept was going to change, you might expect that to change the FSN. And if that happens, that concept can be inactivated and a new one created. And it would be up to the author if they think that they are sufficiently changing the meaning of a concept, again, they would inactivate it. But in general terms, we can change the modeling and it doesn't change the meaning of the concept too much. Um, some SNOMED operation does not seem to fit very well into fire terminology service operations. Uh, for example, sufficient definition, ECL operations. How are these concepts, uh, how do this concept work as a fire terminology service. Right, well, you can request properties back. You can find out on a lookup whether a concept is sufficiently defined or not. And uh, I don't know if that question, where that question was asked in the presentation, but ECL works really well with value set expansion. You can just write your ECL, call it a value set and get those results back. In general though, FIRE is being terminology agnostic and there are limitations to that. There are things in SNOMED that can't be exposed using FIRE. And if you needed to do those things, for example, we might use the Snowstorm native API to do it. For example, you wouldn't want to maintain SNOMED itself using the FIRE API. Um, so really you have to choose your use case and pick the interface which is most appropriate for that. Okay, so I have no other questions coming in at the moment. Uh, so everyone, uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, you can still post them in the Q&A box. It will uh, be open after the session as well. Uh, and we would be happy to know what you thought of this presentation. So if you would uh, be able to rate it in the, in the app, we would be very thankful. And, uh, I just have one question. Then. Oh. Can you please? Uh... Sorry, what's that? 
Can you can you please review? I have added one question. You still have a question? You can you can you can you can ask it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so you you suggested that for our like if you want to go for production use, uh, spin up one stone server. A any challenges with this approach are like now uh, about the frequent updates. How do we maintain? Or uh, maybe you can shed some light on that. This, right, this is something we cover in our developer training days. And if you look to our Confluence site, you'll find the training exercises we have for that. So in those sessions, we'll download a copy of Snowstorm onto a server. You'd have to have Elasticsearch already installed. And then the import of a version of Snowman CT runs in about 20 minutes. And then we also have examples for how to apply an update. So six months later, when the next international edition comes out, or maybe you've got a country edition, uh, we show you how to import those as well, and they run in under under quarter of an hour. So um, it's not without its challenges, but it is all documented, and you can try it out. And if you have any problems, then please do raise an issue on our GitHub site. Thank, Thank you. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, maybe you can just unmute yourself, because uh, there's a delay in the question, the Q&A coming in in my Q&A box, probably. <laughs> okay, so if there's no questions left, then uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, as I said, please rate the session in the app and uh, see you next time. Okay, thank you.